having a clear purpose is one thing, uh, very necessary if you want to, uh, uh, to lead, even from uh, uh, behind. Um, also being clear about the results you are trying to achieve is important. Uh, and the results that I kind of always focused on were these three, uh, equity, efficiency, uh, and responsiveness. Equity is, I think, about improving the health of the population as a whole, uh, reducing variations in health status by targeting resources uh, where needs are greatest. I don't see that's going to uh, change in any way um, in uh, the time ahead. I think the, the, the new recently published policies on public health are interesting. I, I think in terms of distributing N NHS resources, then the commissioning board will be confronted with the same conundrum as the rest of us. Efficiency is possibly uh, the most controversial of the words there, but I mean it in its most uh, enlightened sense, i.e. providing patients with treatment and care uh, that is good quality, that is safe, uh, that is effective, um, and uh, value for money. And I, I think it's going to be very interesting in the new world to watch how the CQC and, and monitor how they, how they kind of deal uh, with, with that issue. And then responsiveness uh, is about the needs and wishes of people who use uh, the NHS. And my contention is that achieving one of these things is very difficult. You know, the, the health gap between rich and poor to achieve some sort of equity. Stubborn, very difficult to close that gap. But NHS decision-making from top to bottom, from kind of Richmond House um, or, or, or Quarry House, uh, right to the kind of outpatient uh, uh, clinic, is about finding trade-offs between these things. Um, there was a moment, I remember, post uh, the 97 uh, election, um, I, I think when Gordon Brown, as the Chancellor, wanted equity. Tony Blair wanted responsiveness. And um, the Secretary of State at the time wanted e e efficiency. So e even the kind of three top uh, policymakers or, or political uh, policymakers uh, couldn't quite come to terms with the fact that you can't get all of these things. So what's the answer? Change everything. The um, point of this slide is, is just to kind of make the point that embarking against that background and in a very tight period of spending uh, on a, a very complicated program of legislative change, uh, system change and organisational change is, um, is a pretty kind of brave uh, thing uh, uh, to do. The, re the relationship between... Um, the government, the market, however that might be defined, uh, and the public uh, is almost, uh, you know, has been and still is, in my view, uh, very um, delicately poised. You know, we operate in um, a, a political uh, system. The, 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 the existing structure is going to change very dramatically. I've got a lot of friends who work in different parts of the health service. I think it's very, very hard uh, for uh, uh, people at the moment who worked really to the kind of best of their ability, sometimes above and beyond, um, in, in SHAs and PCTs, uh, to, to kind of really stick to the task during uh, this uh, period. But endless experience of uh, these organisational changes, and I've been through some, and w indeed was nearly through one myself when the, the bonfire of the Quangos, I came out with my Eyebrows badly singed, but still, still standing. Just after the 1997 uh, election, I was visiting the big acute hospital in Bradford in the middle of the night, um, three, three, three o'clock in the morning, talking to the theatre staff. They, they were asking me about the new government and what the new government was going to do. Uh, the, the new Labour government, I said, is committed to abolishing the internal market. And, and one nurse kind of stopped me several sentences later and said, what is that? And she said, well, I, I've heard this term for years and I've always wondered what it was. I was able to say, well, you don't have to worry about it anymore. They're abolishing it. <laughs> but, uh, um, but, but uh, you know, the, the notion that somehow um, the kind of discussions that we are having uh, make any impact whatsoever on, on their kind of real world out uh, there, they might cause harm sometimes. Uh, but they really make a uh, positive impact. But one of the things that might make impact is to try and get 
uh, to the bottom of some of these words. And it's not very difficult. So if you start defining quality in terms of uh, avoiding harm, effectiveness, uh, being respectful and responsive to, to people, being, being um, uh, t timely in the way that things are done by trying to avoid waste, uh, by kind of mini minimizing variations in practice, at least you've got something to work with. You've got a currency that you can work with uh, with the, uh, the clinical, uh, 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 clinical community. Um, I mentioned the public health white paper, um, the, the kind of crucial importance of tackling the wider range of public health. I, re I remember in Scotland when some of the public health functions way back in the early 70s uh, were in uh, local government that we all used to spend a lot of time, Dobson's phrase, uh, patrolling the boundaries rather than crossing them. And we've got to kind of avoid that mistake uh, right up uh, front. So any approach to public health that cuts out uh, the, uh, the, the clinical uh, community um, and, and throws all its eggs into uh, the, the kind of the, the new uh, uh, approach, uh, I think has to be very carefully judged. One, one of my great kind of frustrations looking back in the health service is, is that through successive changes in health policy, the public health community, and I'm sorry if I offend any of you who are here, uh, have had huge opportunities really to kind of make their big impact and they've never quite uh, pulled it off. I think it's absolutely crucial that the NHS uh, plays its part in working with the scientific community for the simple reason that because kind of advancing understanding of disease will help us to tackle it uh, and uh, will work ultimately in the interests of patients, uh, because our commitment to economic growth, point I made earlier, and the unique position of the NHS to undertake large-scale uh, clinical studies uh, is important. And David Cooksey did this kind of marvellous uh, report on the translational medicine, in other words, translating ideas from basic and clinical research into the development of new uh, products and approaches, and then um, incorporating these new products and approaches into clinical practice. And I spent kind of eight years working at this and thinking about it in uh, uh, Dundee, um, uh, and I, I think it's going to be hugely important to our future. You can't, from my generation, give a talk about NHS management without mentioning uh, Roy Griffiths. Um, uh, Roy Griffiths, for the young here, was the... Um, the architect of general management in the health service, I think, in the uh, mid-1980s. Uh, in 1991, he gave a, an audit commission lecture. Remember the audit commission? Um, and uh, he said, I don't believe you can do anything unless you motivate uh, uh, staff. And, and this, to me, is going to be a crucial uh, factor uh, as we embark on, on this uh, change. So what are the government arrangements going to be for tackling uh, that issue. Um, leading change, uh, managing the NHS is dead easy. All you need is a clear purpose, very clearly defined results, uh, an understanding that you can only achieve so much through uh, structural change, uh, a focus, I would argue, on quality outcomes and safety, uh, a wider perspective, um, the ability or at least the intent to constantly kind of go around the loop, constantly iterate to try and uh, align uh, uh, support strategies. And at this crucial time, this is not an advert for the King's Fund or anyone else, but at this crucial time, being brave enough to continue to invest in uh, leadership development uh, and to continue to invest um, in good governance. Thanks very much.